Jesus. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Prophetic Prayer Line live chat. My name is Patricia McKenzie, and I'm here on YouTube Live every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8 to 9 p.m., one hour of power in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'll wait for a little bit. One hour of power with the Holy Spirit, prophetic prayer line live chat. And my live chat is available. If you have prayer requests, if you have testimonies, to God be all the glory. Come on one, come on all. Share, 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 share. Like and share, like and share, like and share. Yes. So we'll wait a little bit. I'm playing a little bit of music for you all. I do not have the rights to this music, so... You know, <laughs> thank you, Lord. So I'll wait for a little bit. So hopefully you all saw my story. Uh, I put up on uh, Facebook. Uh, yeah, on Instagram saying that I'm on tonight. 8 to 9 p.m. One hour of power. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. So glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'd like to see uh, today is November 16th. It's a Monday, November 16th, and that's 2020. Again, my name is Patricia McKenzie. I'm here on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. 8 to 9 p.m., one hour of Holy Ghost power, okay? I never know what the Holy Spirit's going to say. I just avail myself as a messenger. So come on, come on, come on. Uh, like and share, like and share. Let somebody know that I'm on Monday. Hallelujah. So we'll open in prayer. Uh, have the music going. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I give your name all the praise, all the honor and the glory. I thank you for this YouTube prophetic prayer line chat live. And I thank you for that, which you're going to speak to your people and that we will all be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So, OK, um, hope everybody's weekend was great. I hope that you all are staying under the blood of Jesus, yes, and under Psalm 91. Well, my weekend was very, 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 very interesting. But um, I did ask the Lord what he wanted to say to his people tonight. And, uh, and what I got in my spirit was... Hunger for the Lord. Hunger for God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to play this a little bit. And uh, just to be in a place of worship. So I just really pray that you're blessed by this music, it's instrumental, it's worship. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Again, my name, come on in. Thank you. Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Um, live chat is on the side. You can type something in. You can have a prayer request, uh, ask questions, ask for um, supplications or touch and agree. You know, come on in, come on in, come on in. And uh, we can go from there. Remember, it's one hour of power, one hour of Holy Ghost power. Amen. So anyway, we're going to be talking about hungering for God. Let me turn this down a little bit. And just invite the Holy Spirit to have his way. Amen. So, you know, this is what I got in my spirit was hunger for God. And I was like, okay, where do I come from? What scripture do I come from? And immediately what came in my spirit was the Beatitudes. So, um, which is Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, uh, Jesus gives the Sermon on the Mount. And I actually have a life application study Bible. Thank you, Pastor Terrence Kennedy, for this present. A um, while ago, 20, 2007, I think. So anyway, Jesus gives the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus gives the Beatitudes. Now, the, the subject tonight is hunger for God. So, you know, we're all in this COVID-19, this pandemic. You know, we've been staying under the precious blood of Jesus. We've been staying under Psalm 91. Um, our pastor has been talking about every morning, basically, Psalm 91 ready. Battle ready, basically. Psalm 91 battle ready every morning for like the last eight months because we're in the 11th month of this year 2020 but it's actually the eighth month of this so-called pandemic COVID-19. Eight is the number of new beginnings if anybody did not know. Eight is new beginnings and so the Beatitudes is in the book of it's in the New Testament um, Matthew chapter 5 Jesus gives the Beatitudes. So it starts at, and now I'm reading, so if you have a different version of the Bible, it's okay. We're all going to end up in the same place, right? So our subject tonight is hungering for God. Uh, chap Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, he meaning Jesus. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's verse six, y'all. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake, meaning the Lord's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hallelujah. And that was Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. 
Okay, Matthew chapter five, verses one through 12. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just thank you right now. I ask that you breathe on your word, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that your Holy Spirit will bring revelatory knowledge prophetically to this word, oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords, all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. There's a hunger for God. Now it's interesting. I just want to tell a couple of testimonies and stories. But verse six says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, but they shall be filled, shall be filled, shall be filled. And it's interesting. I had a conversation with, um, I would call him a street, a street evangelist. He's an elderly gentleman and he's he's in the neighborhood and he puts his table up with his books on it um, on the days that I guess he's led to go out there. And he has some great books today. He has some really great books. Um, and we just started having a conversation and he was like, how can I get like really closer to God? Now, he's a he's an older man. I mean, I don't think he'll mind me telling his age. He is 70 years young. And I mean, he loves God. Uh, I believe he loves God with his whole heart. And he was like, how can I get an anointing like that? And we were talking about some of the greats who have gone on. Uh, we mentioned uh, Morris Cirillo, who just went on a couple of months ago, maybe. Uh, Billy Graham, just in that caliber. And I was sharing some things with him. And I said, you know, the anointing costs. Especially if you call to the five-fold ministry gifting. The five-fold ministry gifting is in Ephesians 4 and 12. I'm going to turn to that now. Ephesians 4, 12. Talks about the five-fold ministry gifts. To the body of Christ. So Ephesians 4, I apologize, it's not 12. Oh, yeah. Ephesians 4, chapter 4, New Testament, verses 11 and 12. And I'll read that for you. Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. It said, and he himself gave, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunningness, I'm sorry, and in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So in, in basic verses 11 through 16, but basically verse 11 talks about the fivefold ministry gifting. You have the apostles, you have the prophets, you have the evangelists, you have the pastors, and you have the teachers, five. And remember when David went to fight Goliath, he chose five smooth stones. So how do we know that the five smooth stones were not the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelist, the pastor and teacher that when he took that slingshot and 
and hit Goliath in the top of his, the middle of his head and killed him. It took the fivefold ministry gifting. It took the fivefold ministry gifting in David. Because David was a king. But he wasn't a king yet. He was anointed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By Samuel to be king when he was just a boy. But he had that, he had that kingship. So, apostolic, prophetic, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Again, David took those five smooth stones and used one. And my question is, which one did he use to knock Goliath out? Was it the apostolic? Was, the prof was it the prophetic? Was it the evangelist? Was it the pastor? Oh, the teacher. That's a good question, right? Let's see Holy Spirit will answer. Amen. So which one was apostolic? <laughs> apostolic, foundational, prophetic, mouthpiece of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So going back to Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So, okay. Hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be so should be filled. So it's like, how do you, how do we go about becoming more anointed? And this this conversation I had with this gentleman today was just interesting, and we were just talking about the anointing on certain giants who have gone on. He mentioned Shambach. You know, um, he used to do the tents. Uh, tent meetings in the Bronx in New York City. And then he had, a, I think a few times, he had a, a tent in Harlem on 25th Street, like in Park Avenue. And I went to that one too. Um, but he was powerful. His ministry was evangelistic, but very, very, very powerful, Shamba. And then you had the Billy Graham. And uh, one of the books that he had on his table talked about the generals in the gospel. And they had a picture of A.A. A. Allen, uh, Amy Simpleton McPherson, um, Smith Wigglesworth. Now, these are names of people who go way back to, I guess, the beginning of the 1900s or the 20th century or in the 21st century. And they had some awesome, awesome anointings on their lives. Catherine Kuhlman, who I believe um, she had a evangelistic healing ministry also. And there were stories that I read about Smith Wigglesworth. And I, you know, the stories that I heard about him was interesting because when he, when they were getting ready to come into town, him come into a town to hold, uh, I guess a tent meeting or service, they would hear that he was coming to town and they'd shut down all the bars, they shut down the gambling houses, just shut everything down, knowing that he was coming to town. And that says to me, hey, Robo Shah, he had such an anointing upon his life that people respected. Hallelujah. The anointing upon his life. If you can get on a subway train, Jesus, hallelujah. And he would get on. A, this is one of the stories that I read about Smith Wigglesworth. He would get on a train, I guess in, back in those days, they didn't have planes yet, or I'm not sure. But anyway, he would get on the train and he would sit in a subway car. I guess it's something like what we call Amtrak. Um, and he would sit in the car and the person that was sitting in the car with him just started telling, just started telling their whole life story to him, not understanding why, not understanding the anointing on this man's life, that the Holy Spirit was bringing um, conviction to that person where they were com confessing all their sins. And I guess by the time they got off the subway or the train, I'm calling it subway, but the train, I guess these people gave their life to Christ, you know, because of the anointing that was on his life. And someone said to me one time, he says, well, do you think we can live holy? I said, the Bible says, 
be holy for he is holy. So if it says it in the word of God, then that means we can do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, mind you, we can't do anything on our own. If we could do it on our own, trust me, we wouldn't need Jesus. Now, would we? You know, um, we need Jesus in every aspect of our lives. Amen. So to God be all the glory. So reading from the Beatitudes, which is Matthew chapter five, verses uh, one through 11. Yes. So hunger. What do we say? What's hunger? Let, you know, I had to come today with my little Oxford English Dictionary. Because sometimes we use words or we throw words around and we use it all the time and go, well, what does that word mean? Right? So it's so simple to say something and think that as we throw it out there, somebody understands it or maybe even the person that's saying that word doesn't understand the definition of the word. So I like to always have this handy, you know, and go, oh, that's what that means. So hunger, H-U-N. Okay, so I found hunger. It's a noun. Hunger, a feeling of discomfort caused by a lack of food. Also a strong desire. Verbs are hungers, hungering, hungered. Hunger after or for, have a strong desire for. Yes. So a feeling of discomfort caused by a lack of food, a strong desire. Amen. That's hunger. A strong desire. So a strong desire. So let's put that in here with the Beatitudes where it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So to hunger for God, a hunger after God is... A strong desire. We have a strong desire for God. So that's what this gentleman and I were talking about. This gentleman who's a, I call him a street evangelist. Um, a strong desire. He said, how can I, how can I get there? I was like, you know, it's, it's you're going to pay a price for the anointing. I don't care what anybody says, you know, and you have to sacrifice. Let's look up that word too. Hallelujah. Sacrifice. A sacrifice. What's a sacrifice, y'all? I don't know. Sacrifice. How many of us are willing to sacrifice to satiate our desire and hunger for God? Sacrifice. Here we go. Sacrifice. It's a noun. So the killing of an animal or person or giving up of a possession as an offering to a god or goddess. Second one says an animal, person, or object offered in this way. The third one says an act of giving up something you value for the sake of something that is more important. Ah, okay. So, okay, so for me, for instance... Um, giving up something for me would be giving up a few hours of sleep. So if the Lord is waking me up at 4.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I just went to bed at 12, and he wakes me up at 4, that's not even a good five hours, four hours sleep. So that's a sacrifice. I'm giving up something to gain something more. Is that what that said? Uh-huh. An act of giving up something you value. We all value sleep, right? For the sake of something that is more important. So it's more important to be obedient when the spirit of the Lord wakes you up in the middle of the night or matter of fact, keeps you up all night long. People say, what am I supposed to do? Well, ask the Lord, ask Father God, ask Holy Spirit, ask Lord Jesus. Am I supposed to be up reading? Am I supposed to be up 
praying? Am I supposed to be up? Uh, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, because sometimes you're up or on the internet all night, can't sleep, you know, uh, put on some worship music, you know, how, however you feel led to do it. And different times of the day or evening is um, different watches. They call them watch. So one watch will start at, say, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's a three-hour, six, seven, eight, nine, a three-hour watch. That's the first watch we say. Second watch is from 9 to 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. Third watch is from midnight to 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. Fourth watch, hey, glory to God, is from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And in each one of those watches, hallelujah, glory to God. And each one of those watches, there are activities going on in the spirit realm. I uh, see we're going a whole different way here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And also, hallelujah. So I gave you four watches, right? Then there's another watch after, after the 3 to 6 a.m., there's a watch from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. After that, there's a watch from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Then there's a 12 noon to 3 p.m. And then there's a 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And it goes around. So those are different watches. So instead of four watches, you actually have eight watches. So in each watch... There's activities going on. So, for instance, if you are doing a 6 a.m. prayer call or a 5 a.m. prayer call, prayer line, that time is breakthrough cycles. It means that it's a fresh start. 5 a.m. actually is in the cycle of the 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And in that 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is where you make declarations unto the Lord. Matthew 14, 25 to 33. Um, miracles occur, wisdom, revelation. And it's a very it's a prophetic watch. That three to six. So if you have a 5 a.m. 6 a.m. prayer line, in that watch is a prophetic watch and whatever the Holy Spirit drops in your spirit is, is what it is. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then when it goes from the 6 to 9 a.m., it's breakthrough cycles. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in here. Yeah. Glory to God. Breakthrough cycles. That time, uh, that, that, chunk of uh, time period, watch, time watch is a fresh start, 6 to 9 a.m. That's when people are kind of getting up, getting their coffee, getting their children together for distance learning, schooling, uh, getting ready to do work from home on your computer. Before the pandemic, it was getting the kids up, getting breakfast, maybe making them lunch, sending them off to school. School bus comes at a certain time. Make sure you get them out there, get them to school. Now everybody's doing uh, distance learning on their laptops and computers and, and uh, what do you call it? Tablets. Amen. So that breakthrough cycles, uh, that fresh start, that 6 to 9 a.m., new cycles, consecrate our day that God's will is done in our lives. It's revelatory knowledge comes forth in that time. And I find that Hallelujah, Jesus. I find that in that time, 
of the morning, whether it's four, five, six a.m., that they said prophetic is prophetic, is very prophetic, you know, and that's when like the activity from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. and then from three to six is that's when the adversary and his kingdom is is setting stuff up for the saints. Setting traps instead, hey, hashatabasaya. Setting traps, setting snares, setting nettles, setting uh things to to trip you up. But we get a jump on it prophetically. You get a jump on that st- jump start early in the morning. If God is waking you up at three and two o'clock in the morning, you usually go to bed at eight, nine PM and you find yourself up at two and three and four and five in the morning. Every day, every other day, the Lord is shaking you up. There's a reason. Get up. If you don't know what it is, ask the Holy Spirit, pray in the spirit. We don't know what's going on in the atmosphere. Spiritually. You don't know what the enemies, what kind of plans he's got set up for, for you. You know. So as we get up and we're praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. We're praying in the Holy Ghost. And guess what? Hashekeriasa. Cutting up stuff in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4 and 12 talks about the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and bone and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it's cutting up stuff in the spirit. And we're praying in the spirit. Singing in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's one way of, 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 of putting that hunger out there for God and saying, yes, I'm going to get up. I'm going to, to worship you. I'm going to love on you, God. I'm going to praise you for another day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because somebody's not here to say thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So hunger and thirst of the righteousness. Those who do that shall be filled. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 6, Matthew 5, verses 1 through 11. Verse 6, that I'm going to give it to you again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled, ha, hungering for God. That's one way of showing him, I love you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you, not because of what you give me, but because of who you are. Amen? Because of who he is. We worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we we draw closer to the Lord, as we draw closer to the Lord, hallelujah, and he's pulling us towards him and stuff is falling off of us. You ever get an onion, those of us who cook, and you start peeling off the outside layers, glory be to God. You start peeling off the stuff. You start, God starts peeling off stuff. He goes, this is you. You go, oh, yes, Lord, that's me. I repent. All you have to do is be honest with God because God already knows what's, where you're at and what you're doing, what all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So he t- you take that onion and he starts peeling stuff away, especially in this time of, of quarantine. He's been, oh my goodness, peeling stuff away. Peeling and peeling and peeling as he's peeling stuff away, the stuff, the draw. Hallelujah. He's peeling all that old stuff away and he's drawing us closer to him. Those who are sacrificing the time to get up and intercede and pray and plead the blood of Jesus and stay under Psalm 91 and do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. To stay safe in this day and time, in this quarantine time, in the name of Jesus. 
hunger and thirst after righteousness and you spend time in the in the presence of the Lord and you, you just find your prayer closet. Your prayer closet might be an actual closet where you can walk in the closet, close the door and go to praying in the spirit. Amen. And it's not always about just me, my me and my four. No, 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 no. I got a, a map on my my wall here and that's a map of uh, Africa, South America, Cuba, just different places. And sometimes the, the Holy Spirit will say to me, pray for this or pray for this place. And I'll go, what? And I'll, I'm just obedient. He said, pray for Algeria. I pray in the spirit for Algeria because I don't know what to pray. I was like, I haven't heard nothing in the news about Algeria, but I'm going to pray. Just like the Holy Spirit said, Algeria, pray in the tongues. Glory be to God. And sometimes, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you to pray for stuff you have no knowledge of. I am so serious. No knowledge of. And then you start decreeing and declaring things and, and having declarations. And you listen to what's coming out of your mouth. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah, Jesus. So that's part of our hunger and thirsting for the things of God. And just to 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 draw closer to God. And what I was saying before is as he's peeling stuff away, people from your past or even family members will say, I know you. No, you don't. You ain't been around me on a continual basis on a continuous day by day thing. So when people say, I know you, no, you don't. Because I'm not the same person I was yesterday. I'm not the same person I was last week. I'm not even the same person I was when the pandemic hit back in March. I'm not the same person. So when people say to you, I know you, no, you don't. You think you know me. But every day that God wakes us up, we should be going from glory to glory to glory to glory. And anytime somebody says to you and, you and you know in your spirit, you're being changed by the Lord because you're spending time with God. You're in his face. Hallelujah. In his face. So when somebody says to you, oh, I know you. No, you don't. Because you haven't, you don't, you don't want to see the change. You know, so people come up to you, family members or whatever. I know you, Joey. No, you don't. Because I've been with God. If you can't see the anointing on little Joey's life, that he's not the same, then something wrong with you. Or you don't want to see it because of whatever. But I'm telling you, those of us who've been drawing near to God on a regular basis, hallelujah, to God be the glory. When this whole pandemic thing is over, you're going to see some saints that... That's going to look like we came down the mountain from being in the presence of God for 40 days. And when Moses came down that mountain, hallelujah, his face shone, S-H-O-N-E, shone to the point where he had to put a veil over his face. I'm going to do something. You all going to laugh. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Mm. He was shining so bright, they had to do like this to Moses. They couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't look at him straight in his face because of the anointing. And he was shining from being in the presence of God. That's what we want to, that's where we want to get. That's where I want to get. I want to be, I have that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Lord, keep on peeling me and, and, and. You know, taking layers off of me and taking stuff out of me. And as he's taking stuff out of us and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work in us. Hallelujah. It's going to show and shine on the outside of us. So people can say what they want to say. But you have to know for yourself, for a surety that God is changing us and taking us from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. So that's hungering. And thirsting after righteousness. It's like, want to be more like Jesus. It's like, you know what? This is no time to be playing church. Let me, let me, let me, let me just put it out there. Y'all know that. This is no time to be playing church. 
this is time to get it correct the mundo you know and it's like yes we're struggling here we're struggling there now if y'all go back and watch my uh youtube live prophetic live chat from last thursday Woo, that was caliente i mean the holy spirit just had his way i was wearing a red top so if you see that going down my timeline on facebook sit down get some popcorn get some juice and watch that video because i'm telling you it blessed me when i watched the replay of it blessed me god just holy spirit just took me somewhere totally out in left field because i didn't know what he was going to do so that was that's a blessing i go back and watch my own youtube live or zoom meeting um prophetic prayer line because it blesses me we have to be the first partaker so again patricia mckenzie monday wednesday fridays 8 to 9 p.m one hour of power holy ghost power letting the Lord use me and say what he needs to say. Hallelujah. And sometimes if I don't come on on a Monday or Wednesday or a Friday, I usually put it up on Instagram. I usually put it up on my Facebook page. I'll type something up saying, okay, there's no uh, prophetic prayer line meeting last Friday. Da, da, da. So, so people are not chiming in, looking for me and I'm not there. They're like, where is she at? You know what I'm saying? So just, you know, Keep your eyes pierced open, pierced for on IG or Facebook Live uh, the day of to see uh, I should be on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And there's days that I am on on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. So I never know how the Lord's going to move. I'm just flexible enough to do that and humble enough to do that. Amen. So again, our scripture came from Matthew chapter 5. Verses 1 through 11, the emphasis being on verse 6, which says, um, Blessed are those, or blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. What do you all do when you want to get closer to God? Do you fast? Um, I asked this particular gentleman, I said, Well, do you fast? He's, Oh, wow. You know, and he, he gave me his answer and I was like, mm, okay. Uh, you know, but fasting is not for the Lord. The fasting is for us, you know, to sensitize our spirit so that we can really, really hear the Holy Spirit speak to us um, and sensitize our spiritual ears and sensitize our spiritual eyes. And those of you who believe you have a prophetic gifting, you know, most prophets are seers. Ask God to speak to you through dreams. Um, ask God to let the Holy Spirit teach you and train you and counsel you in the things of the prophetic, especially if you don't have a pastor who's a prophet. If you have a pastor who's a, not a prophet, they can't train you because they don't, they're not familiar with the prophetic. They might know one or two things, but they don't flow in it, so they can't train you in that. And they were, you know, back in the day, they used to have um, schools of the prophets, you know, and those are very, very, very good because then it's being taught by a prophet to other prophets and prophetic people, you know. So that's, you know, you had a, a book, you sit in a class with others who were similar to you or had a gifting that maybe not exactly like yours. Uh, but close to it, where they will either walk in the office of a prophet or are prophetic, how you know, have prophetic utterances through the Holy Spirit. And on last week, Thursday, on the YouTube live, prophetic prayer line, live chat, I did go into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which talks about the nine gifts of the Spirit. So in your, your free time, you can look, go into 1 Corinthians. Corinthians chapter 12, I think also chapter 14, and you could read about the, the gifts of the Spirit. Say, oh, well, I got, I have that one, and I have that one, and I have that one. So again, today's um, subject is hungering for God. Hung, what, what, what do you do? And sacrifice. You know, what is your sacrifice? Uh, hunger for God. Mm -hmm. And it was the Beatitudes. 
and then you kind of go, well, what would I do? To, what would I sacrifice to get more time of being with God or being in his presence? And now that most of us are home in this quarantine, time of quarantine, um, we don't have any excuse, right? Maybe my thing might be watching too much television. And sometimes it's not even watching television. It's just to have the sound on while I'm doing whatever I'm doing, walk around the house, you know, um, that might be, it might be, um, you know, giving up cell phone, social media, that's a sacrifice not to get on Facebook or IG first thing in the morning, right? Um, that could be a sacrifice if that's something that you are, are constantly doing. You can say, okay, Lord, I'm going to sacrifice for this many days, for this many hours, social media. That's a sacrifice, right? Especially if you're used to, I won't text, I won't do no emails, I won't get on Facebook or IG or I won't do no, you know, that's a, that would be a sacrifice for a lot of people. And then... You know, whatever it is that you really, really love to do and that you would find a hard way to to put it down. Say, for instance, I'm just saying hypothetically. All right. Someone who's hooked on soap operas. That was me a while ago when my daughter was little. And she grown now, but um, <laughs> um, soap operas. I knew what time this soap opera was coming on, that soap opera, what channel, what work I had to have done in the house to make sure, okay, I got everything done. Here's my lunch, here's my break, whatever, to sit down and go so I wouldn't be disturbed. Don't nobody call me. At that time, because I'm watching the bold and the wonderful or the bold and the beautiful, I'm just making that up, y'all. But anyway, and that was my thing. So if it was back then, I would say that would be a sacrifice for me at that time. Now it's like I, 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 I look at, you know, soap operas. I go, I don't know. None of these characters or some of them look like they've never aged in 20 years. And I was like, OK, who got facelifts? Anyway. That, that's a like sacrifice. So that would have been a sacrifice. It might be um sacrifice of Kero Shekeriasa. It might be a sacrifice of Krispy Kreme donuts. Listen, y'all, they's popping up all over the place. In my community, they just put up a Krispy Kreme. Now, some time ago we had a Krispy Kreme in my community and it closed down for whatever reason. Now, all of a sudden, like about, it's been like a couple of months now, there's a Krispy Kreme smack dead in the middle of all the food shops. And I'm like, you know what? They ain't right. This is a pandemic. This is quarantine. All that sugar. Oh, my God. So if you're a Krispy Kreme eater, <laughs> there's one in your neighborhood. And that would be a sacrifice if you're used to like Friday nights. Coming home, uh, coming home from wherever or even in the middle of the week and you want to treat yourself or your family members, that would be a sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you always have Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts is almost on every corner now. But a Krispy Kreme, so that would be a sacrifice for some people also. But anyway, this is Patricia McKenzie coming to you live on YouTube, um, Prophetic Prayer Line, live chat. Uh, talking tonight about hunger for God, hungering for God came to you from Matthew chapter five, verses one through 11 and focusing on verse six, which says, um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, um, for righteousness, for they shall be filled Oh, glory to God. So, okay. So what's your sacrifice? What are you willing to sacrifice to go after God with everything you have. Hmm? What would you sacrifice? Would you sacrifice, for instance, your coffee morning Joe? <laughs> I'm not a coffee person, so 
That's not something that I do. But um, coffee. Some people kind of swear by coffee. Like they, 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 they can't get, they're not any good until they've had their morning coffee. So maybe that's a sacrifice not to have a morning coffee at all for like how many days? Yeah, that would be a sacrifice in that time that you make the coffee and sit down and do your devotional. That might be the time that you have more time to have a devotional with the Lord and leave and then maybe, um, maybe not, maybe substitute the morning coffee for something else a little bit more healthier. I don't know, maybe a smoothie. I don't know, come up with something, orange juice, grapefruit juice, apple juice, something else to uh, substitute for the coffee. You know, and that now is the season, you know, apple cider, nice warm apple cider with a cinnamon stick in it, hot chocolate, um, tea, just putting some ideas out there, you know. Uh, just wanted to um, just kind of throw it out there and say, hey. You know, that's a sacrifice. So hungering for God, what would you sacrifice to get closer to the Lord? Again, came from Matthew chapter five, the Beatitudes. Um, Matthew chapter five, verses one through 11, um, focusing on verse six. Hallelujah. And we're, we're coming down the wire now. I hope you are getting something through the, from this teaching tonight. I didn't know where the Lord was going to go with this, but I see now that uh, he, uh, this is where he wanted to go. So, amen. Um, any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Okay, any prayer requests? Let's see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight was Matthew 5, 1 through, what did I say, 1 through 11? Mm-hmm. 1 through 11, and focus. Focus on verse 6. Matthew 5, 1 through 11, focus on verse 6, the Beatitudes. Did I spell that right? Oops, the Beatitudes, I hope so. B E A. Work with me, y'all. B E A U T. Beatitudes. I think that's how you spell it. The Beatitudes. So great. Now, again, my name is Patricia McKenzie. This is Monday night, November 16th. Prophetic prayer line live chat on YouTube. And after this is over, after I uh, edit, this will be up on my Facebook page under Patricia McKenzie. You'll see Faith and Fitness TV broadcast and watch it, share it, like it uh, on YouTube. You can watch it um, on YouTube when it's, it's uploaded. Is going to be under prophetic prayer line live chat because when I go searching for my shows on YouTube, I put in prophetic prayer line live chat. And I saw so many prophetic prayer lines. I was like, well, where's mine, y'all? <laughs> so when you come up and watch it on YouTube, when you, yeah, when you watch it on YouTube, prophetic prayer line live chat and you'll see my face and it'll come up please like please share 
please like and share. Please like and share. Amen. Uh, this is a new um, social media platform for me. I was doing Zoom meetings and that kind of, so I'll wait to go back to Zoom. Uh, but I, I realized that YouTube Live and then the Facebook Live kind of come together. So that's really good. Um, looking at some other social media platforms uh, and seeing how can build from there. You know, end up maybe vlogging. This is vlogging to me, vlogging, video blogging. So uh, thank you for coming on. It's a few minutes to nine. And I like to be on time uh, within the time span that, you know, God wants things to be done. Um, also, go, go over, you know, the beatitudes and see what revelation you get out of it. You know what I'm saying? That'll be really, really, really great. Um, oh, I'll say, I'll say Daniel Harris. Have you read the new gospel chapter that just came out? Uh, no, Daniel. Uh, what is it? Okay, Daniel Harrison. Have you read the new gospel chapter that just came out? No. Can you tell me about it, Daniel? I apologize. I just saw that. Uh, new gospel chapter just came out. Mm -mm. Um, school me. I'd like to know. Yeah. Definitely school me, Daniel Harrison. Thank you for chiming in. Okay, so got about have about five more minutes. Um, if you're there, Daniel, um, can you let me know about this uh, gospel chapter, a new gospel chapter? What's the name of the chapter? Now, you're saying it's a new chapter added to our Bible that we have already? Um, you know, let me know about that, Daniel. I appreciate it. Glory to God. Ah, uh, yeah. So, again, my name is Patricia McKenzie. Thank you all for chiming in tonight. We have a few more minutes. And, again, I'm on live Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 to 9 p.m., one hour of Holy Ghost power. Amen. So please, you know, watch it. Watch the replay on YouTube Live on the Prophetic Prayer Line live chat. That's what you type in. Or you can go to my Facebook page, Patricia McKenzie, under Faith and Fitness TV broadcast. And you can scroll down and see the shows that have been on Zoom, that have been on YouTube and Facebook Live. So I'm looking forward to um, the next time that we will meet. All right. Now, like I said, it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but sometimes the Spirit of God tell me, I want you to do a, a YouTube Live or a Facebook Live now, and it might be a Tuesday or Thursday or a Saturday or a Sunday. So I will always put it up there on IG or Facebook um, saying coming on live in five minutes or coming on live on whatever, you know? So I thank you. I hope you learned something today. I hope you were blessed because I was sure blessed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. And y'all be careful for scammers on this these uh phones. You know, um Yeah, be careful for the, be careful because sometimes you think you're talking to somebody that's in your chat as actually a scammer trying to get you to Whatever. So, especially in this time of pandemic, yeah? You know, uh, quick story, quick, quick, quick story. Um, 
I got caught up several years ago and got scammed on my phone thinking it was this woman of God that I know. And me not thinking, make a long story short, I got scammed out of some money. I mean, hard earned money. And I was through. I mean, I didn't think. I just took the money out the bank, went and sent it Western Union to an address. Who who knows where I sent that $500? That was a lot of money for me, $500. And I was like, what was I thinking? The point was I wasn't thinking. So anyway, be careful for scammers on you on your messaging and your DMs and stuff like that. They'll make it seem like it's your friend from whatever and asking you questions like you have to go, okay, Holy Spirit, I had something ain't right about this. But anyway, it's one minute to Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this YouTube live, Facebook live, for those who are watching tonight, for those who will watch tomorrow, next week, next year, 10 years from now. Father, I ask that you bless them. I ask that they, you give them a new revelatory informational knowledge about the beatitudes and hungering and thirsting after you, Father. Thank you for the sacrifices that we are willing to make. To, to get closer to you in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. It is nine o'clock at one hour of power, I said. Patricia McKenzie signing off. Thank you again for chiming in. Prophetic Prayer Line live on YouTube. And also you can watch the replay when you get to YouTube, like and share. God bless you. Have a blessed night. See you on Wednesday, amen. Patricia McKenzie out.